Greetings. As many of you know, China recently succeeded in cloning uh, monkeys, specifically macaques. Uh, animals have been cloned. Specifically, there was a sheep by the name of Dolly in the 1990s that was cloned. And uh, this seems unremarkable in light of that. However, I should remind you that uh, monkeys are primates and we are primates. And because of this, this theoretically hits close to home. But the bigger, broader issue here, to my mind, is not that monkeys or macaques were successfully cloned, although that's certainly significant and important in its own right, being primates, but the strange rift that exists between the directives and scientific mobility of China versus the West generally, and specifically the United States. For decades now, the United States and the West have been mired and bogged down in a morass of political correctness. It's a virtual miasma. And beyond the political correctness, there are religious, quote-unquote, sensibilities that prevent uh, certain fundamentals of stem cell research. Uh, I know this is a, a big sort of wear my atheist on my sleeve kind of talking point, but it is true. Uh, and I'm not an atheist who wears this atheism on his sleeve, just as a point. And this is a can of worms, basically, that the West is doing its uh, damnedest to uh, keep the lid on. China doesn't particularly care. Now, there are a lot of reasons why the West uh, is in a disadvantageous uh, position with regards to China and, I would say, uh, progress in, in a general sense. Uh, but liberal democracy isn't, quote-unquote liberal democracy is not helping. Uh, China doesn't have that. And China is operating um, on a, a, just a different MO uh, compared to the West. Now, the West attempts, specifically the United States, to uphold certain ethical, moral principles. Um, China itself claimed that they would never clone human beings, for now, we can take them at their word, um, but such uh, promises were made to be broken, particularly those uh, that are made in the realm of new scientific ground and, and breakthroughs. Uh, I think it's foolish for anyone to think that China or any other uh, country with the inclination and the capacity to do so would not go ahead and, and, and clone humans if it's to their advantage to do so. But what is the fundamental issue facing the West and the United States? Well, it is the political correctness. Um, on every front, people are fighting this entrenched bureaucracy of you can't say that, you can't do that, you can't research that. Meanwhile, what is now, I think, universally regarded as the main competitor of the United States, that is China, does whatever it pleases. They're working with CRISPR technology. They are working with genetic modifications, editing, cloning, you name it. They do not care about the quote-unquote ethical implications uh, of really anything. What they want is progress. And by progress, I don't necessarily mean uh, progress in the progressive sense, but they want to move things ahead. They want to make use of technology that's available now. Now, you might uh, cast moral judgment on them, and maybe in some strict ethical sense, those people who did cast moral judgment on China would be correct. But the real quagmire here, I see, uh, for the West is there comes a point in time in the life of any man, and or for that matter, or more specifically, in this case, nation, where you can sit on your principles and uphold them and sink with the ship and sink to the bottom of the sea and die a painful and unremarkable death. Or you can jettison certain principles and then uh, push forward. Now, I should say, or I should offer the caveat that it is possible that behind our backs and uh, outside of earshot, 
the U.S. government is engaging in uh, complicated experimentation of scientific genetic nature, and who knows what they're developing. Um, the sort of uh, Manhattan Project 2.0, but with uh, biological modifications. Uh, I don't know, you don't know, we don't know. We only have to, uh, the only things we can go on are the things available, and we know that uh, the United States is very reluctant uh, to allow things to go through and, and move ahead. Um, tons of barriers in terms of testing and permission and, and, and what have you. I remember uh, back in the day when uh, Adam Jensen was still alive, he would tell me that there are, in fact, uh, supplements, medications, uh, we could say materials that would, in fact, aid in suppressing aging and longevity, but they don't have FDA approval, so it's kind of, why bother? These are, are huge issues in the United States. And as much as the United States still likes to claim the mantle of being uh, the head honcho, the, uh, the big cheese, the top dog, it, it won't be if in a few decades' time China has perfected cloning and genetic modification and has decoded uh, the genome at a molecular level, at least in the relevant areas, to understand the fundamental basis of intelligence. And as we all can agree, I, I think we can all agree, and I will make that assumption that you agree with me, intelligence is humanity's most important resource. And if they manage to do this and produce a few generations of hyper-intelligent uh, babies, either through direct, direct modification or grown in a test tube or whatever, the United States will be at a huge, huge disadvantage. Indeed, the entire West will. And the West will sit on its laurels or sit on its principles and go down with the ship in, in glorious uh, moral self-righteousness. These are strange times we're living in. There's no doubt uh, about that. But I think that within our lifetimes, even my lifetime, which is probably significantly shorter than yours, as you are possessed for now of the blessings of youth, that we will witness tough decisions that will have to be made on the part of the powers that be in the United States and Europe. And I am increasingly inclined to think, based on past precedent, although things might well have changed or shifted so far to the left that this is no longer the case, that acute need and necessity will, will trump the insane and absurd political correctness of our time. And that the need and desire to push forward and be competitive in the marketplace as well as the, the world at large will possibly finally put an end to the worst of political correctness and SJWism. Uh, liberal democracy be damned, mind you. Because, once again, you'd have religious blockades, you'd, you'd have all these, these issues. People don't like to admit it, but there are advantages to having an autocracy. Am I arguing, I start us, am I arguing that autocracy is the best way forward? Not necessarily. I'm not an autocrat per se. But you can see the freedom with which uh, China uh, does what it wants, and the limitations, the endless layers of unnecessary bu bureaucracy. No, no doubt, I know people who have lived in China. There's a lot of bureaucracy there too. But the government doesn't say, uh, "Don't, don't test this drug. Don't do this research because it could be offensive or unethical." So, the silver lining in all of this. Uh, possibly, if things haven't shifted too far to the left, is that maybe the the powers that be, the government, the authorities will say, we've entertained these SJW warriors uh, enough. It's time to get serious and get real. Uh, we need to be competitors. China and any other country that decides to employ cloning or other forms of uh, genetic technology, and the only way forward, the only way to do that, is to forego some of our quote-unquote sacred principles. In such a scenario, they would say we're not going to listen to religious fundamentalists, maniacs, 
uh, and we're not going to listen to SJW far left nutcases. They can have their little corners of the world, but the country itself and the government will move forward. There's still the can of worms open at that stage. I mean, I don't think any Western power that engages in cloning uh, technology or genetic modification is going to be able to escape so-called ethical questions uh, revolving around this issue. And so this will always be a hindrance. China is just not concerned with this sort of thing. Uh, arguably, places like Japan and, and South Korea probably wouldn't be too much either. I don't think Singapore uh, would be. Um, because these are cultures where pragmatism has uh, primacy over quote-unquote ethical concerns. I'd argue that in as much as China is an ethical entity, it's it's either a facade or it's a surface level projection uh, made such that uh, Western nations can feel placated and and uh, satiated in their need to, for a, a global ethical consensus. Well, I'll say as I draw this video uh, to a close that. No doubt in the past uh, of humanity, there have been civilizations and empires that stood by certain principles, religious or otherwise, and in this process uh, fell into decay, decline, uh, if they were not outright destroyed, because they just insisted on sticking to their guns no matter what, rather than being adaptable, adaptive, and willing to change with the times. Uh, I do think the West is more abundant, and this could be the uh, the kickstart it needs in the not too distant future. Uh, time will tell, but as much as there might be concern uh, regarding this issue, I also think we can be reasonably confident that it it might actually aid those of us who oppose political correctness and favor scientific progress and research and what have you. Uh, in a way that has uh, hitherto been unprecedented. Anyway, that's all I have to say on this issue. I didn't want to make this video too long. Something to dwell upon. There will be more to come, assuming I'm still alive, uh, in this cold month of the year, the second month of the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2018. Take care, and may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.